graders, starting chapter three. This is page 81. All right. Izzy's party store, party invitations come in packages of eight. How many invitations are in 10 packages, 100 packages, 1,000 packages? Solve this problem any way you choose. Well, so party invitations come in packages of eight. Um, well, what's eight times 10? I'm just going to write this down here. Eight times 10. 10, you know that's 80. What's 8 times 100? That's 800. And 8 times 1,000, that is 8,000. You should be noticing a pattern. Um, 10, 10, 0, 2 zeros, 2 zeros, 3 zeros, 3 zeros. What do you think 8 times 10,000 would be? It'd be 80,000, and we see the same number of zeros. Um, I also just want to point out to you guys, 8 times 10 to the first is also 80. 8 times 10 squared. What's 10 squared? That's 100. That's going to be 800. And 8 times 10 cubed, that's 1,000. That's going to be 8,000. Okay? What patterns do you notice in your work above? Um, well, we should be noticing. Um, well, let's see. Here. How could we phrase that? Um, let me see here. The answers. have the same number of zeros as the number of packages. All right. Next page. Let's see here. It says each place value is the number 10 times the value of the place to the right. The place value chart shows this relationship for the number four. Look for patterns. Okay. Um, So let's see here, 10 times greater than four is 40. 10 times greater than 40 is 400. 10 times greater than 400 is 4,000. 10 times greater than 40,000 is 400,000. So I think you guys understand that. We touched on this in the very first chapter. Find 32 times 10,000 by, by using place value relationships. So 32 times 1 is 32. 32 times 10, you just add a zero. 32 times 100, add two zeros. 32 times 1,000, three zeros. 10,000, four zeros. All right? And then as I pointed out a couple minutes ago, instead of using standard form, this is in standard form, using the power of exponents. So um, 32 times 1, that's the same thing as 32 times 10 to the 0. Anything with an exponent of 0, anything, is equivalent to 1. So that is 32 times 1. 32 times 10 is 32 times 10 to the first, which is 320. And 32 times 10 squared, that's 32 times 100 two zeros and then 32 times 10 cubed zeros to the fourth four zeros all right and I'm not worried about this well let's see here do I want to worry about that um, Nelly says that 60 times 1,000 is 6,000 well Nelly's correct about that because there are three zeros in a thousand Kara says that 60 times a thousand 60,000. Well, Kara is wrong. Um, so Nelly 
is correct because um, let's see there are three zeros in a thousand So the answer is 6,000. All right. So here's the meat. 83 and 84, do you understand how many zeros will, will there be in a product of 39 times 1,000? Okay, that's the first question. All right, so the answer is Three. There's going to be three zeros. How many zeros, zeros, zeros will there be in a product of 50 times a thousand? Um, so I'm just going to put a comma because the second answer is four because we have one zero there already and then three more. So the answers are three and four. You could put a, actually a semicolon between those. Two. Explain how to find the product of 90 times. Uh, 10 to the fourth um, so you could write 10 to the fourth is equal to 1 and four zeros one two three four should have a comma there not there all right so 90 times 10,000 is how many zeros do we have one two three four five one two three four five and then where do we know to put the comma count over three one two three nine hundred thousand all right use reasoning to fill in the missing numbers you guys can do these that's easy number six these are easy too. Let's see here. Let me do this one. 30 times 1 equals 30. 30 times 10 equals 300. 30 times 100 equals 3,000. 30 times 10,000 equals 30,000. 30 times 10,000 is 300,000. Um, how about this one over here? 90 times 1 is what? 90. 90 times 10 to the first power is 900 because that's 90 times 10. 90 times 10 squared, there's two zeros there and we already have a zero there so that's 9,000 because there's two zeros here plus one more and that's going to be 90,000 three zeros plus one more and 90 times 10 to the fourth is 900,000 four zeros plus one is a total of five zeros one two three four five okay i think you guys can do these um use reasoning to fill in the missing numbers uh, oh, that's an exponent. <coughs> I was looking at that thinking, what are they talking about there? 52 times 10 to the, what, fourth power is 520,000. So how do we know that? Because I can just put 52. And then how many zeros do I add? One, two, three, four. And then my comma goes right there. And that's 520,000. All right. So here, there's another exponent. Just like we did this one here. All right, you guys could do those. Next page. Look at a number 20 here up at the top. Uh, at a football championship game, the home team uh, gave a football to each of the first 100 fans who arrived at the stadium. Wow, how nice. Each football cost $28. How, many, how much did the team?
28 times 100. How many zeros do I add to 28? That's easy. 2, 8. How many zeros do I add? 2 zeros. 1, 2. Where does the comma go between the 2 and the 8? What do I do not want to forget? The dollar sign. So $2,800. I could put a decimal there and put two little zeros. That represents the cents. That almost looks like kind of a crazy looking three. I'll wipe that out and fix it. Gotta love white out. This looks a little better. Okay. All right. 21. Without multiplying, tell which expression is greater. 93 times 10 to the third or 11 times 10 to the fourth. How do you know? Oh, that's kind of interesting. Um, well, well, without multiplying, um, well, I mean, you, <laughs> that's silly because you're going to multiply in your head. I mean, so let's, let's just do this. 93 times 10 to the third. How many zeros do I add? One, two, three. Where's the comma go? Right there. I guess that's not really multiplying, but I am kind of, um, well, I don't know. I think it is multiplying, but anyways. So 11 times 10 to the fourth, 11. How many zeros do I add? One, two, three, four. Where's the comma go? Right there. Which is larger? Well, I'd say 110,000 is larger. How do I know? Because I multiply it. I, I figured it out. I don't know. I'm not worried about that. Anyways, scratch out. How do you know? Sometimes they ask these things and... Oh, I should I should write my own math book. A truck is carrying a ten squared bushels of onions, ten of the first bushels of peaches, which is just ten, and ten cubed bushels of corn. What's the total weight of the crops? Um, weight per bushel in pounds. Um, so so. 10 squared bushels of onions. So that's going to be onions. Um, that's going to be 100. And peaches equals 10. And corn. equals a thousand. What's the total weight of the crop? So I think we're going to need something over here. Weight per bushel. All right, so let's look at the onions first. So if they're carrying a hundred bushels of onions and each bushel weighs 57 pounds, how many pounds of onions total would it have so it's going to be 57 add two zeros 5700 see what i did there peaches 50 pounds per bushel how many bushels 10 so it's going to be 50 times 10 what's that 500 and then corn's a thousand ears of corn and the corn is 70 so we add a zero there and three more zeros. So 70, one, two, three. All right. So there you go. Total those up. Somebody loves me. I have my phone ringing somewhere. All right. Um, let's see here. I think you do 23. 24, there are 2,000 pounds in one ton. In the United States, the weight limit for a truck and cargo is 40 tons. How many pounds is that? Okay, so it's going to be 2,000 times 40. Okay, 
Make sure your answer is in pounds. Um, which is equivalent to multiplying a number by 10 to the fourth? How many, how many, it's 10 to the fourth, how many zeros do you have? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right. All right, that's it for your homework help. Next one is three, two. I think you guys are good to go.